Oh my god, bro. It's a oh girl? My. Bro. Oh my fucking that god, is... bro. What the fuck? I'm surprised she didn't kill your ass. Oh, you had the crucifix. Okay. That bitch looks Yo! She sounds like the grudge. Hell yeah, dude. She's on the other side of this car. We need to get out of here. We got our evidence. Let's fucking go. Yo, goodbye, Maria. EMF level 5. Goodbye, Maria. Yeah, I swear to God, if I hear a fucking... Yo. She's rushing. She's chasing Dude, this up. door's locked, bro. This door's locked. This door's locked, bro. Oh, shit. Dude. Okay, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. You're glitching the door, bro. Yeah, there oh, is she is locked. Door. She locked the door, bro. Dude. Oh, fuck. That was just a couple clips from Phasmophobia, a horror game that is relatively fresh and I have nothing but high hopes for its future. What's up folks, my name is Tanner and this is For Your Money. Today I want to draw some attention to Phasmophobia because personally I feel like there's little to no attention for it as there isn't really any walkthroughs for how to work stuff. If you enjoyed this video, why not subscribe and if you would prefer an audio only version, the link is down below with the Discord link as well. Now before I dive into this hidden gem, this is an early access title so don't let anything sway you into thinking this is a bad game because it's not finished. Phasmophobia is a VR and non-VR horror game that sees you with a group of up to four players investigating paranormal activity. Now what's neat with the concept is you're not there to cleanse the spirit, more so you're there just to prove that there is indeed something from beyond the beyond. To do this you'll utilize multiple pieces of ghost hunting equipment. EMF, spirit box, sage, camera, video camera, crucifix, and yeah, of course you get a flashlight if you want, but I'm that dude who says fuck it, and my light is the flashes from the camera. That's how I play horror games. I do it in the way that would make people turn their heads. I'm, I'm here to get scared. Now, each piece of equipment is just as important as the next. Without the EMF, you wouldn't exactly know where the ghost was. Without the spirit box, you wouldn't be able to talk to the ghost via the in-game voice recognition. They're all important. Now yes, I said voice recognition and talking to the ghost. Now, this game has you ask questions that'll make you feel uncomfortable in your own house. I hate asking William Taylor how old he is or if he's here with us because I expect a damn ghost at my house to respond. It's really a spine chilling game. Now when you're selecting where you wanna go for your missions, there's always a description. Sometimes they'll tell you if it's dangerous, but not all the time. If it is dangerous like a demon or a poultry guy, you can die. This is where the crucifix comes in handy, and I can't express how many times a friend of mine had died in this game, and I went to leave the house and I felt like something was right behind me, staring at me. It's that 3am bathroom trip everyone hates, except for that's the entire atmosphere in every mission for the whole mission. Now I mentioned walkthroughs, and what I meant by that is another interesting factor in this game. This game doesn't tell you much. I mean, what the tutorial does tell you, it is helpful. But they don't teach you how to use certain pieces of equipment, like Sage for example. That took a while to figure out, and it was as simple as another player has to hold a lighter while they light the Sage in another player's hand. Another thing is determining what type of ghost you have. Now I mentioned demons and poltergeists, but there is a good chunk of spirits in this game, and to truly determine, you need to complete objectives two through four. But to do so, you need equipment that one, you might not have the money to buy yet, and two, you might not be a high enough level to buy. So what do you do? You go into the jobs, do what you can do, leave the mission, return to base, and get paid. This is the grind of this game, and it is relatively a fun grind. I mean, though it sounds repetitive, I mean, honestly, every mission I did, I have a different story from finding weird items like a bone on the floor to a random basement key that I still have yet to figure out what to do with. And then you have multiple looking ghosts like a ghost girl I encountered or an old man with a scythe. I mean, it's creepy and it has a lot of variety to it. It's a game about learning and progressing through the levels. I mean, it's not what I expected from a ghost hunting game. I, mean, I don't know what I expected, but this wasn't it. For the design, I was surprised. Most early access games have graphical or audio issues, or both. But this game seemed to, for the most part, lack all of these issues. The sound of this game is chilling. From random grudge noises to old Bill Wilkins from The Conjuring 2 talking to you, there is no shortage of alarming sound. I mean, truly, this is a unique game, and I hope it does well, and I hope this brought even one person's attention towards it. These are the games we should be loving, games with great innovation and dedication. I'm excited for the full release, and whenever it does, I will review it. That's all I got, folks. If you enjoyed this video, why not subscribe? Otherwise, hit that thumbs down. Till next time, fellas. Tom. Yo, what the fuck was that, bro? Oh my God, bro.
That shit was in my fucking room. <laughs>